All right, let's open with prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, for your commitment to us. We are so often uncommitted to you, and uh, though we, we strive to be, we are so easily distracted by the sin that surrounds us, the temptation uh, that constantly comes into our lives. And, and so we pray that you be patient with us and that you forgive us as you have promised and remind us always of your love for us and your Son, Jesus Christ. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, <clears throat> so in the um, Revelation study, you guys have been talking about all the bird kills and stuff like that? Really? Because there was a whole lot of falcons went down last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing I don't really care. <laughs> Oh, how long have you been waiting for that? <laughs> I told Larry this evening, I said, did Green Bay win yesterday? And he said, yes. I said, I'm surprised Pastor didn't have his Green Bay Packers t-shirt over his Cossack. <laughs> you guys didn't notice that the liturgical colors this morning were green and gold? God's a Packer fan. <laughs> I was waiting to see something on the screen. Now, there had to be a liturgical reason. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you can call it coincidence yeah. or, you know. Oh, you can wait call till it I tell Larry. Wait till I tell him what he said. <gasps> That's the Jets colors, too. Oh. It? <laughs> oh, green and white. Yeah. All right. Um, so, let's see. We are on uh, Genesis chapter 16. We're going to do chapter 16 and 17 today, hopefully. Okay. Did it go around? Did I, did you, oh, here. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, they were is all kind of. Is this one, 15 through 17? Well, yeah, no, here, this it, is 17. It wasn't all on there. Here. So that's 16 and 17. Oh, okay. When I get Just, done working, like I usually shut my phone off. I know, that's what <laughs> I said. I thought, hmm, I only need 16. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. For some reason, when I printed out, it didn't print page se or chapter 17. So I just reprinted 16 and 17 for tonight. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Right. Um, <clears throat> all right. So uh, Genesis 16. Somebody like to read a bit? Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bore him no children. She had an Egyptian maid whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold, now the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my maid. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. So after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian, her maid, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as a wife. And he went in to Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my maid to your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your maid is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness in the spring, on the way to Shur, and he said, Hagar, maid of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will so greatly multiply your descendants that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son, you shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has given heed to your affliction. He shall be a wild ass of a man whose hand against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, Thou art a God of seeing, for she said, Have I really seen God and remained alive after seeing him? Therefore the well was called Berlai, or something. It lies, or Babweiser, I don't know. It lies between Kadesh and Bered. 
And Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called the name of his son, whom Hagar, Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old, and Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. Right. What? So far. Isn't it, though? And it sounds a little bit like the Garden of Eden. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know, I never would have done that. <laughs> Well, I, if I I'm had my best friend, <laughs> if I had, I don't know if I would have thrown it up to Abram. I know I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you have to keep in mind that you know this is a different time, different place, and She's um, still in that time. <laughs> <laughs> but it was you know this having a male heir was a huge thing, um, and so. Uh, this was uh, this was commonly accepted kind of thing. Nobody would have batted an eye. At it. Why? What Except. I want to know is why do they always assume it's the female? Well, that was the way things were then, and and for a long time, probably till early in this century, it, that was never the male's fault. No. Yeah, I mean, you know, you'll. I mean, it turns. I mean, how out many way, yeah. but how still. many how many wives did Henry the Eighth behead or kill because he couldn't have a male uh -huh. son? Uh -huh. I mean, obviously, it's a son, it's a male. Uh -huh. um, okay, never okay. thinking that perhaps it was his fault <laughs> <laughs> and the way he abused his body. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, plenty of women have. Uh, you know, whether it be someone as notorious as Henry VIII, or, you know, but there have been plenty of women that, that have been sort of cast away for not being able to bear a child when most, you know, there's a decent chance that it was, especially when the guy goes through woman after woman and, <laughs> boy, none of these women. <laughs> But yeah, this is this is kind of a bizarre story to us, you know, to, in our ears. Because I'm I'm reasonably certain that my wife would never tell me, you know, I really want to have a child, so um, go sleep with this other person. <laughs> <laughs> Although at the same time, you look at nowadays, that actually we're coming back around to that. Yeah. When you when you start looking at um, the some of the the reproductive technologies and, and things that we have with you know it's kind of sort of like a surrogate yeah it is um and, and you might choose your sister and do artificial insemination and yeah, yeah. And it's a little bit similar but they didn't have the technology <laughs> honey they didn't have the technology no. i mean you know that yeah that's what it comes down to this is they're doing it the old-fashioned way <laughs> it's a lot cheaper too you know. <laughs> yeah although in Sarah's case in the world's the result I'm not sure it was cheaper oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no that's for sure man we're still paying for that one um, <clears throat> alright so Sarah had been barren her whole life she was now 75 years old and it had been 10 years since God had made his that's what, promise not sure why the word isn't there. Oh, it looks like it got chopped off in the printing. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> in this situation, what would you do? All right. I know. Okay, I wouldn't do that. All right. What would you do? Well, she should have trusted in the Lord like we would do. That's right. We yeah. would trust right. in we would God. Do that. After 10 years, we'd still be trusting him, holding faith. Okay, I want to see if you we like can the thing, so go back to that promise <laughs> exactly. Like, did he say she would give birth? Well, see, that's the thing. No. Okay. He told Abram that he would he give would, birth. Yeah, that's the, what the, I wanted that to. That he would have right. a son. Well, that's what I want to look specifically to see what it In 15, said. you mean? Um, I think there was one before that, too. Um... Yeah, this is a couple times. All the way that you see, I would have been, um, I would make a system of earth. 
And I thought, wasn't there something that said she was barren? Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. Right. Yeah, it was all over the place. She was barren. Cause yeah. Even in the beginning of 16, Abram's I mean, wife bore him no children. Yeah. I mean, you consider the fact that she's now 75, 75 years old <laughs> and doesn't have any kids yet. You know, and, and they probably married at before they were 20. You know, I mean, this is this is a long time. And, and they weren't able to have kids this whole time. So, and, and this, this was before the days of family planning where people, you know, <laughs> say, well, we're going to wait, you know, a few years before we start to have kids, you know, <clears throat> it was the, the more, the better and the, the sooner, the better. And, you know, okay. so, you know, oh, okay. <clears throat> first, but okay. In those days, since I did that, why? Why didn't Abram do something before, what was he, 83? You know, just... You mean before 10 years was up? No, when, when they were real young and say, okay, you know, you're barren, so... Well, you know, at the same time, notice that she suggested to him. Yeah. It wasn't his idea. But <clears throat> isn't that unusual that it's not his idea in those days? I well, don't know. Um, <clears throat> but remember, Abram feared the true God, even though, you know, what may have been common was not what God wanted. And and so Abram, being a godly man, was not going to cheat on his wife, even though it's, it was acceptable in society. Um, well, okay, I won't go there. Never mind. The other thing is, he's he's pretty smart. He waits until his wife suggests it. <laughs> it was your idea. <laughs> you told me to. <laughs> well, she didn't handle it very well, did she? No. <laughs> no. And then I noticed he didn't do so well either because he said, "You, she's your maid. You take care of it. Your problem. Your, you on. handle it. <laughs> <laughs> I did Man, my he, job. <laughs> he, he was right in a mess there. <laughs> It was a lose-lose, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah th see, this is one of those things where it's 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 sort of like the. Uh, it doesn't change now. <laughs> yeah, this is, <laughs> he's doing a lose-lose. <laughs> yeah, th this this is like one of those situations where 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 she says, "Does this make me look fat?" You know. Wait, don't, just let's not just let's just not go there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, no, you know, no, you look great. You know, this is a situation where she says, oh, you should go sleep with my maid. And he should have said, oh, no, dear. I, you know, <laughs> I'm not falling for that one. <laughs> I know better. <laughs> you're just, you're just testing me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, and the other thing, though, is we don't, we, we get these sort of snippets. I mean, it wasn't like, like, you know, Abram was out sort of checking up on the flocks or something. And, and Sarah just comes out to him one day and says, hey, you should go sleep with Hagar. And, and Abram goes, okay. You know, <laughs> there was more of a discussion there, I'm sure. I'm sure you know, <laughs> but, you know, we just like, well, for the sake of. Of keeping the Bible down to you know a thousand some pages, <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll abbreviate it, <laughs> give you the gist of it, you know. Um, all right, so but we have to consider here how desperate they were, all right. And so, so uh, Sarai is going well. I, you know, God promised you'd have a child. It's not happening. So, um, you know. Maybe God's waiting for us. Maybe this is God is yeah. testing us and, and... To see if we'll try to, work, you know, do anything. Yeah, right, you know. sit on our hands and wait for him. Sort of, Lord helps those who help themselves, sort of, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Which, you know, didn't come along until um, Ben Franklin a whole lot later than that. But, you know, that, that sort of mentality, though. Oh, okay. Well, you know, God has, has told us what he expects is going to happen. 
All right. Well, maybe you know it's been ten years. Yeah. Maybe maybe he was. Maybe that was that was there was sort of an implicit command in there, that where God is sort of saying make it happen. You know, and uh, there's all kinds of ways to um, to sort of justify things or, or or to look at things through our own eyes instead of saying, "Well, what does God want here?" So, um. <clears throat> all right. So I think we already answered the question: What was her solution to the problem? All right. And, and we kind of address the next one, in what ways was this a problem, and, and ways being plural here. Uh, there's sort of the obvious one that um, she's telling, any, anytime your wife tells you to be unfaithful to her, the you know red flag should go up. All right, um, this is not what God wants in a marriage. But was that looked upon in those days as being unfaithful? If, if you... Uh, since it was supposed to be a custom, something that they did, would that have been considered being... In, in man's eyes? Right. No. no, I know it was in God's. Right. But, yeah, um, and so the, there's a problem here in their spiritual condition. Right. Number one, it, it, I, I feel really bad to say it, but they didn't, they didn't trust God. Right. But... I think they were kind of new in their walk with him, and maybe they had to. Well, I know they were older, but you know, maybe they had to learn. Yeah. To well, right. You know, and, and that's that's the thing is that we grow in faith through yeah. um, through suffering and through um, through trials and struggles and, and things, and and they clearly they needed the struggle. Um, to really see what God is capable of. Um, and, you know, and that, that's the other thing that we see here, and we see this over and over again in the Bible, and I think this is something that's important for us as, as Christians as we proceed um, and, and as, a, as a church and as, a, um, as individuals, too, is that, that when God sets something before us and he says, do this, and it's impossible, that a lot of times... That's how you know that it's from God. Because if God's, if you know, if 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 God says, "Here's what I want to see happen," and it's something where you go, "I can do that, no problem." <laughs> sure, you bet, God. Then, like, well, it's probably not coming from God then. I never thought of that. Yeah, because then, because then, what are you doing? You're relying on yourself, and the whole point is that God wants us to rely, to rely on Him, and and He wants to be glorified. Well, if you do it yourself, then you say, "Oh, look what I did." This is what I did for you, God. And and God says, it's not really my thing. It's not to, to see what you're capable of. The point is to show you what I'm capable of. Mm. And um, so, yeah, when, when God sets a, a task before you and it's absolutely impossible, that's when you go, okay, God, <laughs> <laughs> this is your thing. So, so I don't know how we're going to pull this off, but... You just show me where to go, and I'll, I'll go there, and um, and uh, let me know when it's time for me to do something and what to do, and, and I'll do it, and and I'll count on you for the rest. And that's when he's really glorified. That's when you know, that's when we really see God's hand in, in things, and um, and you know, I, I talk to, or I, I've I've listened to people that talk about um, things that where their church is all of a sudden just taken off, and and. Um, and growing like crazy, and they go, "Well, what did you do? Nothing. It was a God thing." And 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 you know, there's this, this conference, and he's, he's talking about this. He goes, "You can ask anybody on, that I have on staff here." And and he's talking about this thing where they just um, they all just decided to pray and 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 then uh, and then just like the next Sunday, there was this like massive amounts of people showed up. And they, well, what did you do? What you know? You just advertising you know this or that or like no we didn't do anything different you know well no really what did you no seriously it was a god thing you know and so stuff like that happens and and we you know we we, we always want to sort of pick it apart and go well what what method did you use was you know some sort of 
trick or, or <laughs> you, some gimmick or you know what what's your what'd you do <laughs> it was a god thing <laughs> hey we, we just gotta hope now that god's listening to us <laughs> on the internet and maybe he'll hear us <laughs> you know what's there you go. Well, <laughs> let's, I mean, let's pray for that no, no and that's not to say that that you don't use the the gifts that that god has given us all right um you know certainly if, when it comes to um sort of uh, leadership training and you know and, and and different methods and you know talking a lot about uh, sort of how to reach your community and and knowing their needs and stuff like that and you know sometimes god's gonna act miraculously and, and he's just gonna poop here you go you know and other times he's gonna make you work for it and um and but then through working for it then we of course grow um and, and develop an appreciation and, and things like that and if you always have things handed to you on a silver platter then you don't really appreciate it um so not that i would mind but you know, <laughs> probably get lazy too, we'd be so. humble we'd be real humble yeah. <laughs> like yeah god let me win the lottery <laughs> I'll be humble. I promise. I'll give it to the church. Some yeah. of it. Yeah. I'll give ten percent to the church. Uh, I can handle it. Just, just try me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, so we also see down the road, and this is already mentioned too, that we're still having problems um, mm -hmm. because of this. The whole sort of Arab versus Jew thing is still going on. <clears throat> and um and, and will forever uh till jesus comes back mm -hmm. and and i always get a kick out every time i i turn on the news and and some american president has has brought peace to the middle east yes and, and i've heard it so many times like poor souls <laughs> i mean most it's of our so delusional <laughs> yeah most of our presidents have done that and you know <laughs> you, you, yeah. it's like Oh, congratulations! I give it a week. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and it's, I mean, and they always talk like, "Well, this is it. We finally did it this time." It's like, guys, it's been going on for thousands of years. I'm sorry, but that'll never change. You know, and, and that, that, change that. See, no, there's a perfect example. If it ever happens, it's not going to happen by something the man does. It's going to be through the, the you know miraculous intervention of God. All right, and, and could he do that? Yeah, he could. And 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 is he going to? Maybe. And boy, wouldn't that be great? Okay, um, but he also hasn't promised to. So um, I'm not banking on it unless he sort of appears to me in a vision and says, "Hey, guess what I'm going to do?" You know, and then I'll come. All right. <laughs> well, I thought it was interesting. I'm a, I can't remember if it was in sixteen, but. Uh, was it in 16 where he says he's going to, no, I think it was in 17, where he talked about um, giving Ishmael all these descendants. Did he have to do that? Couldn't he have left the line to Ishmael? Yeah, well, yeah, that was, that was in, in 16. Um, uh, verse 9 and 10. The angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress, submit to her. And the angel added, I will so increase your descendants that they will be too numerous to count. Yeah, I don't think that was necessary. <laughs> and and really? when I read that, I always wonder why God did that. Yeah, and he told <clears throat> Abram that, and that's an, another reason why I'm you know, thinking, well, it seemed like Abram and Sar Sarai, were accepting of the fact that they weren't going to have children. He was going to give all his stuff to his servant. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, no, there will be a child from your, you know, you will have as numerous as the stars. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, could, so of course, at their age, well past the childbearing years, you would sort of assume like it would happen soon, not Right. Ten years down the line, right. you know. Right. I mean, yeah, because even they were just would be being right. human. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. right. And then that's, I think, as it turned out, even after this episode, one in another ten years before Sarai actually conceived. Yeah, it was a while. Yeah, because 
I she think, was 85? Well, and but I think she was... She was... Would have been 96. She was 90 when she bore Isaac, um, and he was 100 when he was born. So that would have been 10 more years. Because he was... It was 86 when... Uh, yeah, when Ishmael was, was born. born yeah. And I read somewhere that that... I thought Abraham was a hundred years old. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born. To him. Okay, so it would have been ten more years, and they waited this time, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though oh, yeah. <laughs> who was running after that toddler? <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, yeah, every time a... I read the scripture that talks about increasing Ishmael's and giving him a line, really. Just like you did Abram, mm -hmm. Abraham by then, but I don't understand it. Maybe that's something I'm not supposed to understand. Well, that just shows God's grace, you know, <laughs> that he didn't, he didn't curse Ishmael. Well, he didn't have to, but he didn't have to give him. <laughs> you could have blessed him a little less. <laughs> yeah, he could have let him live, made him have a good life, or, you know, allowed him <laughs> to. But he didn't have to say, you know, it sounded like what he told Abraham a little bit. I don't know. I think it's a little strange. <laughs> Too generous? Is that what you're... Slightly. <laughs> God can be that way at times. I bet you, you thought we were just going to zip right through this, didn't you? <laughs> all nah, not really. We're all, we're all, <laughs> all, <having> issues. <laughs> all right. Uh, so we already talked about um, uh, modern reproductive technology. Uh, a little bit and and to some degree yes and no uh, as far as morally comparable I mean here uh, you know and you can get into this whole debate over sort of what is acceptable and what is not and man it's hard it, it's hard to um, and, and it, it's easy to just say well <clears throat> here we go black and white Boom, 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 All right. And, but it's harder when it's your wife or your child who, um, who has gone and gotten married and, and wants to have kids and you know they'd make great parents and, and, and you'd love to have a grandkid and, and you're not going to be able to. And, and they say, you know, we can afford to do this thing so that, so that we can have kids, you know, and um, <clears throat> and I had my uh, bioethics professor in uh, seminary said that um, that the Bible only knows one method of, of procreation, and that's it. And but to me, that seems like well, it doesn't forbid the other ones. So, you know, you can't just say if, if it's not commanded, it's forbidden. Um, and so then where is that line? And, um, and who draws it? Yeah. And well, and, you know, and I would say that God draws it, but, but, you know, uh, where did he draw it? <laughs> so in other words, for a couple to say, if God wants us to have children, then we will. You know, just like with Sarah and Abraham, my wife will get pregnant or I will get pregnant. We don't necessarily say that, right? I mean, because that's kind of what's in my mind. With When I don't think it through, that's my first thought. Is Yeah, I mean, you know, all right. So you've got... <clears throat> you you have uh, uh, re uh, medication, fertility medication, all right? Um, most bioethicists and, you know, anybody that's sort of talking about all this stuff generally says, yeah, the medication, that's all that's doing is sort of fixing something that's wrong. Mm -hmm. You're still, you're still conceiving through the, you know, the no, age old no. method. Yeah. All right. Then you get into, um, like, in vitro fertilization, right, where you're taking the eggs out, fertilizing them, and putting them back in the woman. Well, that sounds okay, 
but the but the, the biggest problem with it is how it's done. Um, that they get a whole bunch of eggs, fertilize all of them, pick the most viable, and then put the rest of them on ice. And then what do you do with the rest of them? Right? And I've known couples that have done that, and they said, well, we believe life begins at conception, so now what do we do? Yeah. We're not, we're not going to have, we're not going to give birth to all those kids. Yeah. But <clears throat> and there are people out there that will sort of adopt those embryos and 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 say you know we will we believe those are children and so um you know we will adopt them my wife will um will have them implanted into her and she will give birth to them and they will be our children and um so for you know that's that's one solution uh to that problem it's a pretty complicated and difficult one. And the other thing is, anytime you take the you you fertilize an egg outside of the um, outside of the body, it puts that that child in. I mean, their survival rate's much lower. You're putting them in danger. So um, <clears throat> you know, so that's a, that's a big issue. And then you get into you know the sort of surrogate questions and is it okay for another woman to carry your child and i mean it gets messy it and and, and difficult and, and and there's just you know <clears throat> and then there's the fact that there are human beings doing these procedures and they make mistakes and people think that what was implanted in them was their own child and find out it's not mm-hmm. and that's happened yeah and, you know, and uh, so often what it comes down to with these sort of issues is, is um, and whether it be that or, or whether it be, you know, whatever other issue that you're talking about that that's our, society, our society faces where we don't have sort of cut and dried easy answers to, mm-hmm. right? And, and every time I look at those, I go, where have we gone? <clears throat> How far have we fallen? That we've gotten ourselves to the point that we find ourselves in situations that um, that there's just there's no way out of it. You know what do you you know here we've we've got these frozen fertilized eggs. What's the moral thing to do? Uh, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and there's no you know. It, it, what's what's the best case? What what? I, I don't even know. You know, if the couple is not really, um, is not going to be able to to take on the responsibility for those other children, and and the the process is very expensive, and and if you don't have the money to do it again, and you know, I mean, even like in vitro is only I think sixty percent. Uh, success rate or something like that and um <laughs> and it's just it's it's so complicated um and and you know for me having three kids through sort of natural methods it's easy for me to say adopt mm-hmm. right but that's easy for me to say yeah and um and you know, uh, it's it's just not the sort of thing that that you can just kind of come out real strong and hard on, you know, without sort of dealing with people on an individual basis and, and talking about where you're at and stuff. Because you know, with these issues, there's also this this issue of, of faith that we talked about, and and not just sort of faith that God's going to give us a child when He hasn't promised to, but um, but there's questions also here. Um, and, and this is hard to deal with, but there's questions of idolatry, where where a, a couple says, you know what, I don't care what's right or what's wrong. We want to have a child, and we're going to do whatever we have to do. Mm-hmm. All right. And if and if they're not willing to at least consider, um, well, what does God have to say? You know, maybe we should do a little reading on mm-hmm. the sort of ethics or talk to somebody who's you know, who, who knows a bit about that or, you know, or something before we make this decision. 
you know i mean and that i think is is the most important issue that that we deal with is this question of what's the you know what is the the sort of reasoning behind this desire and it's natural to want children to want um, <laughs> to bear a child it's it's it's, it's built into our biology um but yeah to you know to deal with what how does this how does this impact in my relationship with god <laughs> so but you know god never says it's going to be easy for us to work through all this stuff either no Um, all right, so we have this, this, um, in, in 16.5, um, uh, then Sarah said, Abram, you're responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. I put my servant in your arms. Now that she knows she's pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. <laughs> what do you mean by that? May the Lord judge between you and me. Who was wrong? Did wrong? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is really goofy because he did what she told him to do. But here you start should have known better. Yeah. See? <laughs> you start to get this, oh, maybe I shouldn't have listened to her. Which, you know, there's a there's a whole other issue about, um, you know, the sort of headship. And, and you know, this kind of goes back to this morning um, in... Uh, in my Bible class, we were talking about the fall and and, and Adam um, and why Adam was blamed for Eve and stuff. And we talked about that earlier in this group. But um, you know, a lot of the problems that Abram had was because, <laughs> to use a modern expression, um, he let Sarah wear the pants in the family. You know, he he neglected his responsibility as um, as as the head of the family and. He gave in to her temptation and came back to bite him. <clears throat> All right. Um, what can we tell about the angel of the Lord in 16.7 and following? And it's supposed to say, what does this tell us about God's relationship with Hagar? Who is this angel of the Lord? Well, I think we're supposed to believe that it's the pre-incarnate Christ. Yeah. Yeah, it's Jesus. Before he's called Jesus. Um, and, and we see that where he says in verse 10, I will so increase your descendants that they will be too numerous to count. Yeah. He doesn't say, thus says the Lord. Mm. He just says, I will do this. And so it would probably be better to translate this the messenger of the Lord, uh, which is what the word angel means, messenger. Um, so if, if we translate the messenger of the Lord, or even the word of the Lord, <laughs> yeah. um, where we get the, that nice sort of John 1 tie-in, um, not that he uses the same term um, <clears throat> or the equivalent term, but it's, it kind of conveys a similar meaning. Um, that's so sort of tied up with this word message kind of stuff. All right. <clears throat> um, and so, so we see here, and we kind of talk about this already, that God is blessing Hagar. All right, and, and blessing Ishmael. That, um, you know, even though they're, you, because you, you, you kind of feel bad for them. Like here, they get kind of the raw end of the deal here. And, and um, was Hagar a? No, I don't think she was a believer. Well, they picked her up in um, Egypt. in Egypt, so probably not, unless she sort of adopted the the faith of of her um, employer, uh, which was not all that uncommon, uh, especially since the at least in practice she would have, uh, because assuming the 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 rules for Abram were similar to the rules for Israel. Um, like when you took the Sabbath rest, your whole household did, mm -hmm. um, not just your family. All your servants did too. Mm -hmm. 
And so they would practice, even regardless of sort of where their faith was, um, they, they were to adopt the practice of their family. I guess the modern equivalent to that would be, um, you know, I'm, I'm closing the store on Sundays. You don't have to go to church, but you're not going to work on Sundays. At least not here. Why did he look so favorably on Hager? Well, because if he didn't, she'd really kind of get shafted by this whole thing. <laughs> but she was a nice... She, Your mistress. Well, and plus the fact she was being nasty to Sarah, so yeah, yeah she, she was, was no she, bad shape. Yes. So yeah, that's yeah. So I was just wondering. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was being kind of nasty, wasn't yeah. she? Yeah. But um, <clears throat> but we have to remember that God doesn't bless people because they're nice. <laughs> Oh, I thought he did. I thought that's why he blessed me. Oh. You know, I, I've often said that my life is so good that if I believed in karma, I would be so pompous and arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. But I don't, so that I just say, but by the grace of God, go I. <laughs> All right. Have you ever had to wait a long time for God to fulfill a promise or meet a need? Well, I used to pray all the time that I wouldn't have migraine headaches every single month, just about. And I prayed that for many, 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 many years. I'm not positive that it was God's answer because it was, it was after I went through menopause that they went away. But I sure prayed hard enough not to have them. Okay. Anybody else? I've been lucky. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the only thing for me that, that springs to mind is that um, throughout my ministry I've had all sorts of sort of ideas, um, sort of ministry ideas and, and things like that, um, where, where it, it, it was almost like God was saying, hey, try this, do this, you know. <laughs> and, and every time it was like, yeah, but that won't work here in rural Iowa or rural <laughs> Wisconsin or you know or, or something like that and, and it would just it was just like I can't I can't do that here it's it's not even a matter of it's impossible I can't even get that started you know it just wouldn't work and and, and it was and when I came here it was like uh, this long list of, of things like oh that'll all work here <laughs> I'm thrilled so isn't that isn't that cool and and so so it's been that's why I've been so excited um, to be here, and 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 it's just it's just been um, and and you know a lot of the things I I'm just sort of beginning to to go with and, and think, but I've just I've been man I've been having such a good time. <laughs> She's busting at the seams. I so. thought we were a real drag on you. I'm glad you feel that way. Because you've got such a bunch of old We're going to be guinea here. pigs to all his ideas. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're a pretty tough congregation. I think we're going to handle it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that's the thing. You guys are pretty good at bouncing back. So. <laughs> Can't keep us down. Yeah. A couple of times I have, you know, I mean, it, it just, like I was, the things that I pray for, I always get, you know. So, I mean, I haven't had to, there have been times when, you know, I've said, okay, that, that's it. God can't, can't handle anything else, you know. <laughs> yeah. So there's stuff that I'm still praying for that I'm still waiting. Oh, you know. you're still waiting. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, um, I have continuous prayers that are like just repetitions. Waiting, waiting a lot of you. Keep all the people I love. Yeah, saying. but I haven't bought a ticket, so that would be one of those impossible things. Yeah, me too. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, well, those are just continuous, but I think every day, you know, here. Nobody, nobody. 
Um, I, I remember when Larry's mother was first ill. I prayed really very hard and consistently that she be healed. Um, <coughs> and I guess so that wouldn't be a matter of waiting in the respect of her physical healing on earth because we I didn't we didn't see that um but I, I'm kind of like you I, I can't say that I've ever felt that my prayer was prayers were not answered um or maybe I shouldn't put it that way I don't know how to put it so maybe it'll come to me later <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so then, next question. This kind of ties in with that. Has God shown his His presence recently in your life? If so, based on how He did that. Um, <laughs> what might you mean? That's, it, it's, he it's, healed my shoulder in the middle of the night a few months ago. I guess I would call the place um, shoulder heal. Okay. All right. Shoulder so yeah, you see this. We see this over and over again, where something significant happens in a place, and so they sort of name the place after what happened there. I'm a little slow, but that was kind of my thing. <laughs> yeah, so that was a, a different, better name. But yeah, so you know, and that's that's something to think about. That would that would be kind of a cool thing for us to do. That if you know, when when God does some amazing thing, all right. We have a new name for this place. You know? <laughs> See, they would in the Old Testament. What they would do is they'd set up these big stones, and and it wasn't just like you know grab a bunch of rocks and make a little pile. All right, they would get these huge stones, you know, sort of figure like Stonehenge kind of <laughs> stones, and they would drag these stones and they'd get them all and set them up, and and it was this, this is a monument. This is, God did something huge here, <laughs> so we're gonna set up a monument to say. This place, right here. <laughs> this is where God did something huge. You know? That'd be interesting. You see these spring up all over Northridge. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's probably some zoning things, you know, with that. But, you know, maybe maybe that's what we need to do. And, you know, when, when we see God just sort of, like, kind of explode things around here and, and, and just start working miracles and... and so maybe then we need to, you know. Well, we could have already started because, you know, we got the money for our evangelism program just like dropped in our lap. Yeah. We could have put a, a monument up for that out on the front lawn. Mm -hmm. Of course, then we'd have to decide on what kind <laughs> to get. And, no, you know, <laughs> it would have to be small enough that then when miracles happen throughout the congregation, then we'd be able to duplicate it and put it on and, their property. And, and should we light it? <laughs> Would we light it at night? And I know. We'd have to have a committee. Can, <laughs> can, you, can you imagine that, though? That, like, aside from the fact that whoever mows the lawn would get really irritated with it. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> if we, every time, like, something really amazing happened, mm. if we, like, just set some sort of, had some sort of standard sort of monument that we just, you know, we could put a flag up on top of the church. You know how the kings in their castles had those pennants flying? Uh -huh. Every time we we had a big thing here, and we could put up another pennant to fly. They could be all different colors. There you go. That'd be more fun. I'm thinking the roof we have on our church, that's not real practical. <laughs> Something closer to the ground. Okay, well, out, out front. <laughs> what I'm yes, I see. Look at, look at. He's he's got another idea. <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure this was practical, but, but you know, it I, does I, sound I, like that. That would be. I mean, an example. What we one of the things a long time ago um, that they thought would be a good idea was that if everybody in the congregation made sheep out of yes. wood. Mm -hmm. Okay, and oh for God. how many? members are in your family you know and um so we did that and we had it and it it literally On the, the sheep line. filled up the entire front lawn and people noticed yeah you know right. so now imagine if we ended were, up uh, having all these little monuments out front and, and people would start to ask what are those like, for what, is what that are those for? for and if we could say 
if we had all those things out there and, and when somebody asks, we say, each one of those represents a miracle that God did. People would be like, or a prayer that was answered. Yeah, you know. Yeah, um, or some some huge, yeah. you know, not just sort of like, mm -hmm. well, I I was sick and 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 I prayed and and the next day I, with a little bit of Nyquil I felt better, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, like we had this tremendous need and and God met this need. And... I had a miracle. My shoulder. Okay, no, and I, I wasn't discounting that. Well, you can really get him right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, Did I look? I'm talking about the sort of the sort of day to day kind of stuff that. You know, but if you do a monument, you're right. The mowers won't like it. I think the pennants we can put them right out <laughs> where the the roof comes down. Put them right there. With we don't even have to put them on the roof. We can put them on tall stakes. And every single time that we put up another pennant. We start over or whatever in the middle, or, and they'd be flapping and flying in the breeze. They could be different colors. Okay, either a monument or a pen. <laughs> yeah, we just need a monument and like with lots of space on it, where you can put little bronze, you know, sort of plaques on it. And but that's little... only one monument. Wait. You've got to have a the visual <laughs> yes. The numbers yes. But yeah, but I, I'm just thinking. Imagine what people's reaction would be if it, well, each one of these represents a miracle. Well, you know? I know where we could put. It. Oh no, it's not visible enough. Never mind. I was going to say we could put it out here on the corner where that big tree came out, and the the uh, crepe myrtle is growing, but the weeds grow in it. We could put a great big um, monolith there. <laughs> but I'm not sure it's that visible from the street. I'm sure it will bring this up at our next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we did talk about the the youth group meeting. We talked about doing in the um, in the when the weather's nice, um, doing a sort of uh, cardboard village um, where you you sleep outside and sort of homeless for the weekend or something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do it to raise awareness and raise money, <laughs> you know, um, for the poor and. Um, and we said, you know, if we did that out on the front lawn, mm -hmm. what great sort of awareness that that would do, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed yeah. to doing it, say, the parking lot or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, mm -hmm. we and have all would, that space out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. people would see that and Just go, what, what's going on there? And, you know, we get a little bit of publicity in that. We could really, you know, do some good and, and raise some awareness and, and stuff. So. <clears throat> okay, um, short on time. Um, but imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> I I just want to let's take a look at um, chapter seventeen verses nine through fourteen. Don't want to read that. Then God said to Abraham, As for you, you must keep my covenant, and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are to undergo <clears throat> go circumcision, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. <clears throat> For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, including those born in your household or bought with money from a foreigner, those who are not your offspring. To 13? Uh, 14. Whether born in your household or bought with your money, they must be circumcised. My covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. All right. <laughs> so, covenant of circumcision. We can't stop without doing, at least talking about that. All right. What, why circumcision? All right. Are they, by by, um, by having this done, is is this um, a sort of works righteousness, your your um, doing this good work and, and therefore God's going to smile on you because you did this good work? No. No. All right. So then what's this all about? I, I don't know. 
it's his um, badge <coughs> or mark that that you belong to God. I guess. Mm hmm. And God did say to do it. So. Yep. So, you know, this is this is a huge thing. This is if you're Jewish still today, they still practice this. Um, I heard in, somebody in San Francisco, I think it was, was trying to outlaw circumcision. Um, yeah, good luck with that. Mm -hmm. um, outlaw, like make it illegal? Yeah, call it child <clears throat> abuse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, let, let, let me just. I, <clears throat> when my son was born, um, there was, of course, it's every time you give birth to another child, they come up with something else that's not healthy for the baby. Yeah. And um, there was um, a lot of discussion about should you really have your, you know, your son circumcised? Um, there's medically there's not a reason for it you know if this is religious it's one thing and um not the other so um the doctor did ask you know yeah. and, um, yep and and some do and some don't and... but you knew when they were doing that to your baby because you you heard them crying i'm you know, sure just it was yeah, but the thing is, I it used to hold the babies when they were circumcised. Mm -hmm. And what it is, as much as anything else, and I know this sounds very harsh, but it's true, is is the holding them mm -hmm. steady. They do use a numbing <laughs> agent and so forth. And, you know, I'm sure it's like anything else, like when they take the blood from their heel with mm -hmm. a little slip. I mean, they don't use a needle. They use a, a little blade and go like that so there's all kinds of things you know um and i think it's like you say it's, it's private choice mm -hmm. yeah. right so you know but it, as, far, as far as the covenant which does not apply to us anymore there was that was a whole discussion the council of jerusalem in the book of acts they discussed this and they said mm -hmm. you don't have to be a jew and then a christian mm -hmm. Um, in other words, you don't need to be circumcised to be a Christian. Um, and, uh, and so if you want to, fine. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, and, but as far as, um, this, this is what brought you into the covenant, all right? And, and how are you brought into the covenant? Through the shedding of blood. And, um, and, and so this was, in, in many ways, this was, uh, um, it, it pointed to the coming of Christ because sins are forgiven by the shedding of blood. You're brought into the covenant of God's forgiveness by the shedding of blood. In this case, it was your own. Although, at the same time, follow this, okay? The women were not circumcised. Why? I, I was going to say, yeah, what about the women? Though? Right. You know, how did... It was through their husbands circumcision that they were brought into the covenant so the husband sheds his blood for the sake of to that his wife be saved all right okay so you're saying though see i always understood this circumcision i didn't think it brought you into the covenant it it showed that you were okay it's it's a sign of the covenant how exact i mean all right um circumcision like baptism <laughs> isn't something you do to yourself right. it's something that somebody does to you all right um because no one would ever do it to themselves <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't think myself. it's possible, is it? I might baptize myself. Ah, but see, that's the thing. Baptism is always passive. 
which is which really emphasizes our understanding of baptism as opposed to many others where a lot of people see it as this is I'm um, this is my act of of what I'm doing for God or, or, or something like that um, sort of my act of obedience all right but the thing is you can't baptize yourself you are not the doer it is being done to you it's being done for you um, the emphasis is, is on this is something you're receiving, and um, and so it is with circumcision. Now I'm you know happy that uh, that we switched to pouring water on people instead of, <laughs> but uh, you know. Do they teach that in seminaries? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, at the same time, that's there. You know, whether you, whether you see it as sort of this brings you into it, or it's a sign of, of being brought into it it's the the woman is brought into the covenant through the shedding of the blood of the husband all right fast forward to ephesians 5 husband love your wives as christ loved the church and gave up his life for her all right and and all this talk about jesus being the bridegroom and the church is the bride all right so the bride is saved through the the bridegroom shedding his blood right. we won't ask about the woman who didn't have a husband, husband yeah. well then it's to their fathers I, I understand that because it's it's the for the whole nation. That's why I think it says if you don't do it, you'll be cut off from your people. It doesn't say be cut off from the covenant. It said yeah. you'd be cut off yeah, from those people. They, they had a much greater sense. We've sort of lost this in America, uh, or or maybe I should say in the West, um, because of our sort of individualism. But there was much more of a group identity um, throughout the Bible, both Old Testament and New Testament. Um, that's like where you see uh, in baptism when when someone comes to faith and their whole household is baptized. <laughs> it's like, well, it's not like they they went through a fourteen week catechesis thing, you know. Or they, said, I believe. Yeah, I mean, it was like, all right, baptize the whole household, and the whole household, okay, you know. And, and you know, sometimes we see that nowadays where. Um, where a couple gets married and, and, and the one joins the other one's church, you know, and that, that happens quite often. And then they go through all the classes and say, yes, this is what I believe. And, and why are they doing it? Are they doing it just for sort of family harmony and, and that, or, or, or is it through that maybe they go into it for that reason? And I've seen this where, uh, they go into it where the one says, okay, I'll go through classes to join your church for the sake of family harmony. But then after going through the classes, they say, this makes sense. Um, I even had a situation where a guy went through classes with me. Uh, he was a, a born and raised staunch Roman Catholic, married a Lutheran girl, and um, and after uh, after going through classes with me, he said, "I agree with everything you say, but I just can't give up Mary." And um, and he said, "So I'm not ready yet." And and then it was like months later that he came to me and he said, "Okay, I'm ready now." I just I needed some time to you know really deal with that and um, and then he was ready and, and you know mm. so um, so yeah we see that kind of thing but yeah the whole sort of group um, identity um, <clears throat> is is very important and, and, and it's something that we have a hard time understanding but then when you get into these issues where uh, where one person sins and the whole nation is, is punished for it and you go whoa this is bad well <laughs> you know you have to see things through this sort of group identity that, you know, this wasn't just that, that you sinned, but you let down your nation. Mm. You know, you, you have, um, you know, one suffers, we all suffer. So. All right. <clears throat> Let's stop there. Um, feel free to take these home and look over the other questions. Are we going to be working on that next week? Or we what? will move on to something else next week. What are we moving on to? Um, don't ask me off the top of my head. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. So, in other words, only read ahead for your own pleasure because you never know what chapter he's going to jump to. <laughs> well, I mean, we're going to spend some time with with Abram. I don't remember which chapters I'm skipping. Okay. But, you know, we, we, we have to cover... Um, Sodom and Gomorrah and, and the, the visit of the, the three men visiting Abraham and Sarah and, and the birth of Isaac and um, you know there's a lot of stuff um, 
with with Abram. He's a huge chunk and and, and like just a crazy important part of, of the book of Genesis and, and the history of, of Christianity really. Yeah. So um so it's good that we spent some time on all that. So, all right. <clears throat> Let's close with prayer. Father, we don't always know where you're gonna lead us. Uh, we you often present things to us and and um and we come up with expectations that you're going to act according to our time um and you don't always do that and you don't always act the way that we want you to or expect you to but you're god and so give us faith to accept those things and and to uh just to trust in you to be to to answer uh, and keep your promises uh, to answer our prayers according to your wisdom and in your time and um and, and be with us always and just keep us in that faith.